Wow, it's good to be back. I've been here for the last few years, so I'll give an update on uh, progress we made with our on-demand uh, capabilities. It's been quite a, quite a journey, quite a long ride for us, but uh, we are reaching maturity, so I want to share with you some, uh, some progress and some thoughts about uh, what we have uh, learned so far. Uh, but maybe let me start again with uh, the underlying capabilities. We keep investing into our physical assets. Uh, we're still an asset-rich company. Uh, over the last year, we launched new, two new metropolitan networks in Hong Kong and Singapore. Um, I think it's important to reflect on the fact that uh, we need connectivity to be able to deliver on-demand capabilities, uh, especially uh, with the world now moving more and more into data center space with uh, uh, cloud becoming prominent uh, for both uh, uh, public and, and, and private type of implementation. Uh, we, in particular, we keep connecting the data centers, uh, third party and called the DCs uh, across the world. We have over 800 connected now, and that's key for us to be able to uh, spin up uh, connectivity on demand. Uh, same for, for customer buildings, uh, 25,000 buildings connected over fiber across Europe. Um, uh, key investments have been focused in Asia over the last year, but uh, we keep expanding across the world. So uh, more investment coming for 20, 2018. Uh, let's talk for a moment about uh, uh, key trends, specifically for enterprise and, uh, and the, 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 the market. Uh, I think it's hard to see uh, companies today that are not uh, focusing on uh, digitalization. I've been um, um, talking to a number of enterprises. Everybody has a, has a digital program uh, in some form or shape ongoing. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a general trend in the industry. And typically that involves uh, some sort of automation. So everybody's talking about the BPO. Uh, uh, removing uh, existing uh, manual processes with uh, the, the help of uh, IT, with the help of uh, software, in, depending on the industry, can, can take different, uh, different shapes, but uh, uh, is, 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 uh, is, is across the board. Uh, ac across the industry also, there is a shift to uh, subscription-based model and cloud. I think the two things together, cloud has been going on for quite a while. Uh, we, we see our customers more and more moving into the, the cloud space. We, we focus only on enterprise, um, uh, so the business market only. And it's been a slow process for some of them, but uh, it's now taken uh, some, some level of pace. Uh, and especially what we see is distribution across multiple different uh, locations, so public and private cloud, multiple data centers, which makes uh, the network uh, far far more important than before in terms of reaching out to, to these locations. Uh, Subscription-based model, I think, is, is, uh, is also a general trend. Uh, we see it uh, also for us in the supplier space. It's hard now to find anything that is not uh, subscription-based. Subscription so it changes a little bit also the, the investment perspective uh, for, uh, for us. Uh, and last, um, but uh, also another key trend uh, is uh, data-driven uh, decision-making. Um, again, going back to the enterprise, uh, everybody is looking at uh, how to leverage the incredible amount of data we, we are able to collect. Uh, and if you look at uh, telecom in particular, everybody uh, goes around with a mobile phone. The amount of data we are able to collect uh, from usage is significant. Uh, so there is a uh, uh, we need to leverage these capabilities to be able to, to drive differentiation. Um, so these results, uh, and I also, uh, also stole something from the Cisco VNI, is quite, quite handy for this type of stats. Uh, the growth in the fixed internet traffic has been significant and continues to be significant. Uh, uh, over the next five years, uh, it's predicted to be 20, um, over than 20%, per uh, and that drives, again, investment into the underlying capabilities. Uh, so what does it mean for our customers? Uh, higher bandwidth, obviously. Uh, the one connectivity requirements are still growing uh, double digit. Uh, and um, some of the new services we also launched, SD1, uh, are, are growing faster, uh, starting from a smaller base, of course. But uh, they are picking up uh, and surpassing the IP, traditional PVPN uh, investment for enterprises. Cost, cost is still, still a requirement, even though uh, now uh, telecom and NIT has moved away from, become, from, from being just a simple cost, uh, cost center for enterprises. Uh, still, uh, efficiency is, is, uh, is, is of paramount importance. Uh, and speed in general, uh, agility, uh, faster delivery, 
uh, is, is becoming a, a key requirement. Uh, we see a lot of customers now buying cloud services and, and connectivity together. It's one of the key propositions we have, driving uh, faster delivery time. Um, so uh, uh, the, same, the same is applicable for in live service management. And so across the end-to-end -end from ordering, delivering, and supporting services. Uh, so besides the investment in the network, we've been busy with um, updating our portfolio to high bandwidth, so we scale this up uh, another magnitude, uh, and obviously uh, continuing our investment in on-demand and SD1 services. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, in a nutshell, I think this is key uh, for our proposition. We moved away from uh, uh, traditional product, uh, um, the definition of uh, IPVPN, uh, Ethernet, point-to-point, uh, -point, hub and spoke, uh, internet access, uh, doesn't work anymore with uh, the on-demand proposition. Uh, we can deliver uh, the same type of services, but uh, uh, the definition now is component-based. Um, that's, that's been a fundamental shift. Uh, it's been a, a transition throughout the last couple of years since we launched this capability. Uh, you can build uh, connectivity services uh, from ports and connections, uh, Ethernet port, uh, cloud ports is a fundamental component as well, Internet port. Uh, uh, connectivity, a layer two, layer three, a layer one as well, uh, and value other services on top of it. Um, so this enables customers to start to play with uh, the capabilities and build their own uh, services in a much more flexible way than, than before. Uh, we deliver this on a flexible basis or on a fixed basis. We still support the existing uh, business model with uh, purchase for one year, two years, three years, but uh, we can offer flexibility uh, up to the contract can last just an hour. Uh, you pay for the connectivity, spin it up, and then spin it down. Uh, the, the consumption model we have put in place is two options, uh, portal-based or, or uh, API-based. So, so far, uh, the, the, the portal has been the main, the main uh, prominent adoption. Um, so, uh, just just uh, mention this, uh, uh, very, very simple, uh, reserve a port, uh, create a connection between, uh, uh, between ports uh, and modify after you have launched, after you have created this capability. Uh, or the API-based approach uh, that is more uh, uh, applicable to the carrier-to-carrier the -carrier type of interconnect. Um, so if I now reflect on um, our journey, it's probably a couple of years since we launched. Uh, we launched a minimum viable product uh, two years ago and then uh, uh, reached some level of maturity last year with a full market launch, expanded our coverage to Asia, to uh, all, all our uh, on-net buildings. And so we now start to have a sizable amount of customers on the platform. We can tr start to drive some, some conclusions and some, uh, some learnings. Uh, first one, everybody loves uh, the, uh, the speed of delivery is the key selling point that we have uh, been seeing uh, since we launched. Uh, no, not so much so far the uh, in-life uh, bandwidth uh, flexing up and down. It's a, I think it's a learning process uh, for customers. It's like a few years ago when customers started to use uh, cloud connectivity, cloud uh, services, uh, and then at that time maybe didn't know exactly how to uh, use the depth level of flexibility, so we're seeing this, uh, this, this same trend uh, within, within Colt. Uh, everybody loves the cloud, so we sell dedicated cloud access. So typically, I think it's half of the connection we have sold uh, are a combination of uh, a cloud port and a connectivity. So the two uh, uh, capabilities together makes uh, quite a nice uh, uh, option. Uh, and uh, uh, last Kind of a key learning for us has been uh, we need to be able to fit uh, these capabilities into the procurement process of our customers. Eh? Um, it's, all, uh, it's all nice to, to be able to sell this online, uh, but some of our customers, actually many of our customers, have a sourcing process which needs some level of uh, approval, adoption. Uh, I was in a, in, a, in a meeting a few uh, couple of months ago, and one of our customers referred to this as like shadow IT. I, I took that as a compliment because uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's really comparing us with the, 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 the cloud providers, but uh, uh, it is important to reflect on the fact that we need to be able to let customers use uh, their own processes to, to uh, especially during this transition period, to be able to order services. 
The capability we built, uh, I think you, you may have seen this before if you uh, follow Colt, uh, we built an in-house port uh, capability, which is uh, an orchestration tool called Novitas. Uh, this is the, the core of our, our, uh, our capability. We, we have been working with a number of vendors below to actually build the underlying controller layers and, and network layers. You can see lots of names. I'm hoping I haven't forgotten anybody, so everybody should be happy with that. With it, uh, um, so the, the model we have in place is uh, we build um, uh, the underlying network uh, uh, controller on top of it, uh, and then our uh, own uh, uh, business uh, uh, orchestration tool capability on top of it. Um, since last year, we introduced um, uh, a multi-domain orchestration layer in between to be able to glue together the the, the different uh, uh, controller. Um, we uh, have expanded the propositions to uh, Azure and Amazon in terms of cloud connectivity. And I've been working with uh, MEF, we'll talk about it in a moment, uh, on uh, the API to make it standard, to make it uh, really consumable from uh, the uh, multi-carrier point of view. Uh, so it's quite, quite a journey for us. Uh, still, this is part of our overall OSS uh, environment uh, and connect back with, uh, with our end tools. Uh, a key uh, challenge also we've been uh, facing is uh, uh, dealing with uh, all the data sets and data models. Uh, so traditional OSS and, and BSS have been built in a certain manner, so we have been uh, uh, able to uh, and have been challenged to, to adapt this to, to, the, to the old world. Uh, so what's new? Uh, from last year. Uh, federation, I think we, we took a significant step forward. Uh, Axel was talking about uh, the POC disease. Uh, yet another POC at MEF uh, 17, but a step forward. Uh, we, you may have seen press release uh, yesterday, I think, uh, about Sonata uh, and, and uh, the, the MEF uh, LSO APIs. Uh, a number of operators, I think quite a few, have uh, come together to develop uh, this uh, common language across uh, uh, carriers and enterprises as well, so it's applicable to all kinds of customers, uh, to be able to create this SDN and NI capability. So there is a POC uh, with a number of uh, uh, partners uh, at MEF uh, next, next month. Uh, but at the same time, it's not just a POC. I think we have uh, also been working in the background on bilateral interconnect. So watch this space, there will be some announcement uh, in, in uh, in, in a short uh, time scales about us and, and others setting up a proper production-based interconnector to be able to buy and sell service. This is a key fundamental shift uh, from the traditional uh, purchasing sourcing model. Uh, everybody has a carrier uh, purchasing group. Uh, we are moving uh, to a model where uh, uh, the uh, purchasing between uh, carriers is, is going to be fully digital. Uh, optical SDN, the next investment uh, you probably saw in the previous slides, uh, not, we don't have all, uh, all the boxes filled in terms of the underlying capabilities. We've been focusing primarily on packet services. We have an ongoing optical SDN, elastic optical, we call it investigation activity. Uh, it's going to follow the same model, controller, uh, layer, and the underlying infrastructure. Some key technologies enabling this um, uh, in the optical space, there's been significant evolution in this space to enable us to, to be able to control this in a, in a flexible manner, uh, super channel, uh, advanced modulation, uh, uh, advanced programmable rodem, uh, GMPLS, I think has been around for a while, but uh, the, the combination of all these capabilities enable us to, to create these on-demand services. The intent, uh, and maybe a, a couple of uh, uh, comments on the use cases, uh, is similar to what we have done for Ethernet uh, and uh, IP services, so creating on-demand connectivity between endpoints and being able to modify that um, connectivity in a, on a real-time basis. Uh, disaster recovery has come up also as a significant uh, uh, key requirement, so being able to reserve ports uh, A and B and being able to spin connectivity up uh, if uh, uh, something happens. So, work in progress here. Um, also work in progress, we have um, um, been fast in terms of adoption of services, so um, often sometimes we have uh, uh, not uh, paid too much attention to the full end-to-end -end standardization, so uh, we're working now on a, 
uh, on, on a full uh, unified NFV architecture. So the, the current um, situation is that uh, we have uh, uh, some inefficiencies in terms of the use of the underlying computer networking infrastructure. So to be able to launch uh, services faster, we have taken uh, some uh, pragmatic decisions to launch uh, with uh, existing capabilities. Uh, that creates complexity in the operational uh, models. Uh, and, and on the long run, will also create uh, additional cost. I think it's okay for the moment we need to, to, to evolve. Um, so the, the plan is uh, following the Etsy model uh, to uh, invest, uh, validate and invest into uh, a common NFVI across all our services uh, and uh, a common orchestration layer and uh, VNF manager layer on top of it. Uh, it it's a challenge um, in particular for the orchestration layer. Uh, what we see still in the industry, there's still a lot of work to be done in terms of a uh, uh, har harmonization, lots of projects ongoing, uh, uh, ONAP, uh, OSM, so uh, you name it, there is uh, plenty of initiatives uh, to choose from, and so we need to, uh, to, to be able to come up with something which is uh, scalable and long-term enough. Um, I think we are not um, uh, forgetting the fact that there is still a journey, there will still be significant evolution in this space, but uh, we're going to go ahead and, and de select and deploy this uh, in, uh, in 2018. Um, another new initiative, uh, uh, AI-driven networking, uh, we call it Project Sentio in Colt. Uh, um, so I think some of the other speakers mentioned already this, this type of uh, uh, cognitive networking uh, uh, capabilities. Uh, uh, the intent is to be able to automate uh, the, the management of the, of the service end-to-end. Uh, -end. Uh, in, in particular, I'm mentioning here a few use cases, uh, classification of traffic flows, uh, optimization of the, uh, of the network, uh, predicting faults. Uh, I think there are some technologies available today that can, can do that uh, already. Uh, security is a big uh, um, uh, opportunity here. There are a number of uh, use cases in this space. Um, restoration is another one. Uh, automatically being able to uh, create services uh, depending on specific uh, uh, situations and, and, and predicting specific situations. Scaling, of course, I mean, managing capacity uh, needs to move away from the static uh, uh, planning uh, uh, pre process uh, to a more dynamic process with a move to, to, to compute. Uh, and last but not least, uh, building on our capabilities intelligent uh, bandwidth on demand, so being able to modify service characteristics uh, on the fly uh, based on specific uh, uh, situations we see uh, in the customer network, in the, in the, in the uh, overall production network. Uh, so, so far, some of the learnings, uh, I haven't mentioned that uh, we start to see networking as an application rather than just a, 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 an infrastructure capability. Um, this because primarily uh, is becoming part of the customer uh, uh, environment, uh, the, the customer ecosystem, uh, so it, it's playing at the same level as uh, uh, customer applications, so uh, being able to deliver uh, networking ca capability and networking application uh, and uh, hooking that up uh, together with uh, the uh, underlying uh, IT uh, infrastructure and, and application capabilities is an important uh, consideration to make. Agile development, we've been working on uh, on a very agile development model, uh, you have to embrace this, this uh, approach to be able to deliver faster. So we've been uh, launching new capabilities on a, on a uh, almost uh, bi-weekly basis. Uh, so we moved away from the traditional, uh, uh, the traditional process. Uh, the need to work with partners and, and, and competition, so we really are moving away from a model where we have our own capabilities, uh, so working with partners has been significant, uh, uh, sharing uh, uh, information to be able to build capabilities, uh, but also with, with competition. Um, we, we, are, we are doing much more work than we did before in terms of uh, engaging uh, third parties and competitors. Uh, complexity uh, is moving away from the hardware to the software, so need to be careful about uh, what we do in this space. We don't want to end up with uh, hundreds of uh, networking tools uh, moving uh, along the same path as IT. Uh, we have sometimes even thousands uh, uh, IT systems in place. So uh, there is a pragmatic approach that needs to be taken here between uh, investing into best of breed capabilities versus uh, maybe some, some uh, uh, aggregated uh, capabilities. Uh, 
customers. I think we, we put uh, that uh, in front of our uh, building process. Uh, there is a significant engagement. Uh, so we now have customers as part of our development model, not anymore uh, spend a lot of time uh, building capabilities and then launching something to market. Uh, and maybe discovering wasn't quite uh, what the customer wanted. Uh, organization and processes and skills. Uh, it's an important consideration to make. We have changed our organizations to be shaped around uh, delivering on demand. So there is now IT, network, and product, and to some extent operations in the same, in the same area, working within the company, not, not as an isolated function, but within, within, within the company, uh, to deliver this agile development model. Uh, simplification is important. You can't uh, just translate uh, the existing services to, to the new world. Uh, so there has to be, and uh, I was talking about componentization, uh, it is fundamental to look at uh, the service definition and redefine it in a way that uh, allow us to, to benefit from this uh, 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 simplified component-based model. So we have been working extensively on that. Uh, as I said, engaging customers um, has been uh, fundamental for us. Uh, we don't do any more uh, back-end development without uh, having constant customer engagement. So with this, uh, thank you. Um, if you want to watch uh, our demo, there is a booth upstairs or there is something available on YouTube. Thank you.